So before you start researching how the Syrian refugee crisis is impacting children, you need to know a little bit about how this all came to be. So in this video, I'm going to give you a brief lecture about um, the background to this refugee crisis, um, how it happened, when it happened, and what are some kind of the, the, the contributing factors. And the crisis really starts back in 2011. And at that time, uh, an event called the Arab Spring kind of swept some North African and Middle Eastern countries. Basically, what happened was people in these countries got very tired of living under dictatorships. And they took to the streets demanding uh, democracy. They wanted a say in, in running their government. And in many cases, they toppled dictatorships. Uh, that was true here in Egypt, in Libya, and in Tunisia. In all of those countries, people were successful in getting rid of dictators and implementing new governments. The same thing happened in Syria. So people took to the streets, uh, they demanded that they have democracy. And here is Syria. Its capital is Damascus. As you can see, it's surrounded by Iraq, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, um, Israel, and Turkey. And the person that has been in charge of Syria since the 1990s is a man named Bashar al-Assad. His father, this guy here on the right, uh, has, he took power in Syria in the 1970s, and he passed off leadership of Syria to this guy, uh, Bashar al-Assad, and he was a brutal and remains a brutal dictator. So under the Assads, people weren't allowed to speak their minds, people weren't allowed to vote, um, People really weren't allowed to do anything that went against the government. Um, unlike in some other Arab nations in Syria, the democracy movement was not immediately successful. So in previous places, the United States had really supported some of these democracy movements. The same was not true in Syria. In the international community, different countries and around the world, didn't do much to support the protests. And Assad fought back in a really, really brutal way. Um, and essentially what happened was you had a civil war between people who wanted to get rid of this guy and uh, government military forces. So this kind of creates a, a civil war. And it was a particularly brutal civil war because Bashar al-Assad has not been squeamish about using some pretty horrible weapons against his people. This is a, an image of a, what's called a barrel bomb, and it's called a barrel bomb because, well, it, it looks like a barrel, but um, on the inside of the bomb are all sorts of nasty things that could cut you, um, impale you, do all kinds of damage to you were it to explode. So the idea here is when it explodes, it sends all kinds of shrapnel out in the air to do as much damage as possible. This is certainly something the United States would never use because it's, it's not designed to kill targeted people. It's designed to kill as many people as possible. Um, he's also used poison gas, which is something that um, most nations in the world have agreed never to use because it's a really nasty way to die. So he's used these weapons against his own people. Excuse me, please. Um, At this time, middle school and high school students going to the map and beat are excused. Please come down and meet in the high school lobby. He's also just straight up bombed uh, cities that have been in control of rebels, people who were against him. Um, so this is an example of how he has just leveled a city block um, to try to get rid of protesters and to try to get the people of those cities not to support him, or not to support the rebels, people fighting against him. Um, a complicating factor is that in all of this chaos, this group called ISIS, or the Islamic State, or the Islamic State in Levant, whatever you want to call it, has kind of come in. So there's this chaos, and these guys don't want to support Bashar al-Assad, but they do want to start uh, an Islamic State, a government that adheres to religious principles of Islam. 
and they're almost no better than Assad. They're pretty brutal people too. They'll go into a community, um, take over, uh, uh, kill all the men, um, make sure everyone is bending to their will. So they're pretty nasty people too. So basically, there are three groups of people that are causing violence in Syria right now. There's Bashar al-Assad and the government troops. There are rebel groups fighting against Bashar al-Assad. And there is ISIS, which is kind of fighting against both of them. And obviously, that creates a pretty horrible situation. And so that's the reason that people were trying to get out of Syria so badly. And where they're going to are largely neighboring uh, countries. Oh, well, this is an image of a, of a camp in Jordan. So basically, when you leave a country because you're a refugee, you don't just get to go and live a normal life. There's just kind of no place for you to go. They don't have enough housing for all these people. So they set up what are called refugee camps, um, which are kind of little tent uh, structures. They're not designed to be permanent. Um, and that's where these people end up living. So here's another example of kind of the tents. You can, you can see uh, what they're made out of. Um, and here are some children that are involved, that are living in that refugee camp. Uh, right now, over 4 million Syrians have fled the violence. So they, they're called refugees because they're fleeing violence. And each one of these dots represents um, kind of refugee camps, places where they're going. So as you can see, Turkey has, has taken in the most refugees followed by Lebanon, Iraq, and or Jordan, Iraq, and Egypt. Um, no one really wants to live in those refugee camps. They're pretty awful places. And so thousands and thousands and thousands of these people are trying to get out of the Middle East to get to Europe where living conditions are better. Um, and there's a couple of different ways they can go to get out of, of Syria. So you could go um, up to Sweden, which has taken in many refugees. Uh, you could go over the Black Sea and into the Balkans. You could go into Greece. Um, you could kind of go across the Mediterranean into Italy there. All of these different routes are quite dangerous. Um, and what it's called when people are seeking protection in a different place is called asylum. So if you grant someone asylum, you're saying, oh, you fled your country for a good reason. We're going to allow you to come into our borders. Um, one of the things that makes this so dangerous is that a lot of people are crossing the Mediterranean Sea in boats that are overpacked. They're packed to the brim. Um, and they're going to countries like Greece here, which don't really want them. They don't have, Greece does not have the resources to take care of all of these people. They can't just absorb all of these people. And so they're actually actively trying to stop people from doing this. Um, and since it's illegal, that means that you have smugglers who are trying to do this. Uh, smugglers are not trustworthy people. Um, and, and so it's just putting a lot of people at risk. And so over 3,000 Syrians have drowned uh, just during 2014-15 as they try to cross the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, this would make big news. One of them was this very small child um, who drowned when his raft capsized and that helped bring international attention to this problem. Um, and just to put some of this in perspective, the numbers or we're talking about, um, if the United States were Syria, everyone in Syracuse, the city uh, of Syracuse would kind of be dead. Uh, over half, more than half of people in New York City would have fled. Um, people would have gone to Canada. It, it's a huge, huge problem. So that's basically why people are fleeing Syria and kind of the root causes of this conflict.